Howdy guys, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So um, this is going to be a relatively short video. Um, I've been super busy, apologies for not putting more videos up um, recently. Um, but um, yeah, I've been doing other things and um, I will be catching up with my videos this week actually. So uh, I've got some t filming time set aside. But just to tell you about one thing, so I've just put up a new article on, um, on my antique website, so Eastern Antique Arms. Um, and uh, some of you who look at the Facebook page, the Scholar Facebook page, or indeed the Eastern Antique Arms Facebook page, I'll put links for those below. It, I'm sure most of you uh, who watch me regularly know those pages anyway. But I put a link up there, so you may have seen this already. Apologies if so. Um, but that is an article about, well, it's partly about a sword I'm holding, but it's partly about a series of souls, swords. Um, and that's one of the reasons, actually, that at least today I didn't do any um, videos was um, because fundamentally I was trying to finish off an article and you know it's difficult for me because um, as you guys know I'm pulled in lots of different directions obviously I've got a, a day job which thankfully now is only part-time um, but you know I do the antique stuff I do YouTube stuff I run a fencing club I run events I do all this stuff so um, I get pulled in different directions and sometimes I need to give more attention to one thing than another um, so I can't put out the same um, regularity as it were frequency of, of YouTube videos all the time or other things would get neglected and whilst writing articles for my website doesn't pay me anything like thankfully YouTube videos do um, I, I think I really believe it's an important thing to do okay the fact is I know it's incredibly niche interest and even people watching this channel I know that most of you uh, probably most of you are actually not very interested in, in Victorian period military swords. Most of you are probably interested in um, other types of, you know, armament or other types of history. Um, but, you know, that's, that's a subject that's important to me and it's something that I'm writing about and publishing things on and um, I think it's important to do for numerous reasons. None of them money making because none, none of it makes any money, but purely for s sort of scholastic, uh, for research um, reasons. And um, I'm fascinated by trying to unlock uh, mysteries or find out new bits of historical data and that's what this article is about which linked below and so essentially what this boils down to is that as many of you know one of my passions probably my main passion aside from actually hitting people with swords um, is um, the world of 19th century particularly British but not only British uh, military swords but in specific non-regulation swords uh, and the reason I'm so passionate about non-regulation swords is because they show something a little bit more they show a little bit more thought so um, it would be very easy uh, for example in the let's say the year 1880 to be the kind of uh, military officer who would just buy the standard regulation sword not really learn how to use it um, go to war if it was demanded of you might end up in the Sudan or Afghanistan or something like this um, and, uh, and not care about swords but I care about swords so I love it when you find um, uh, sources either written or, or indeed you find swords uh, that show that an individual cared more about swords or swordsmanship than the average okay because obviously I do. Um, I'm, a, I'm a fencer. I'm obsessed with swords. I collect swords. I, I, I teach people how to use swords and I read about swords and I make videos about swords. Um, so I completely accept I am abnormal. Um, but there were people in the period, people like Alfred Hutton and Sir Richard Francis Burton and um, Sir Walter Pollock and George Chapman and John Musgrove and all these people who were also really obsessed with swords and fencing. So I kind of, I kind of feel an affinity with them. And that's what this article is partly about, but also about one specific aspect. So um, this sword I'm holding has on it a uh, dedication. Now, I'm not going to show you too much of the sword at the moment in case you haven't read the article yet. Um, it has a dedication on it. So it's from and to. It's to um, AG, the initials AG, uh, from the uh, Wilkinson proof book uh, record. Um, I know that AG was Captain Gordon. There are several candidates. I won't go into that in this video, um, but probably it was Alexander um, Evans Gordon who was uh, an officer in the Bengal Staff Corps, um, but it is not 100% sure that it was him. But it's from CJM. Now, um, this sword um, I knew about 
um, several years ago, about 2015. Um, the person who owned it previously, um, I, you know, tried to research a bit and tried to share what I found at the time, as did other people. Um, and eventually that person decided to sell this sword and um, and I got to buy it, which I'm very happy about. Um, but who, so who was CJM? So uh, it was from CJM to AG. And uh, I started researching this and then I found that there was another sword uh, which said, shared some characteristics with this one uh, that actually was sold in auction about a year prior to, to 2015, so roughly 2014. And that also um, had a connection with CJM, the initial CJM. And then subsequently there was another sword that came to light, which was actually earlier in date. This dates to 1880. This other sword dates to 1870. And that came to light a few months ago, actually, on Sword Forum International. And um, uh, that was recorded as being the CJM pattern. Um, and more so than that, the Wilkinson record recorded this as a, a person's name. I won't spoil the article, so go and read the article and it will explain the whole story. So just about this sword, so essentially I found out who C CJM is, I did some research, it was interesting to me, I don't know how many other people it would be interesting to, but for me it was really, really great because I've I've basically put in, fill, refilled some, some um, parts of the jigsaw into a story about um, these non-regulation or special design swords being made by Wilkinson between the years of about 1870 and 1880, uh, 1880. Four, okay, um, and so you know, I've it's great for me. I've answered that question. I absolutely know now who C CJM was. I know why that person was designing swords, and I know why they were being sold through Wilkinson, so on and so forth. But let's just have a little look at the swords. So, first thing to say about it is the blade. So, if you just ignore the hilt for a moment, so the blade is in reasonably nice condition. It's got some areas of corrosion, as you can probably see, um, but it has an interesting double fillet arrangement. And from there upwards, I know that this is 17 inches, and in fact the Wilkinson record book records the point as being 17 inches long, and yes, it is exactly that, I've measured it. From here upwards, this is a double-edged fillet blade, not dissimilar to certain types of broadsword and medieval arming sword, okay? So from here upwards, it is double-edged with a central filler. From there downwards, it's essentially a back sword, okay? That being, it's single-edged. This is blunt all the way up to there. And probably you can see, if I'm moving a bit closer, you can see the juncture, if I change the focus on the camera, the juncture there where it changes from single-edged with a back edge to double-edged. <clears throat> so essentially it's got a 17 inch long false edge, you could say, but in reality it's just that from for the last 17 inches it's double-edged and from 17 inches down it is, and it's a 33 inch blade, 33 and a half inch, um, from there down it is single-edged like a back sword. Now this might seem like a weird or kind of curious blade cross-section, but in actual fact, it's extremely similar to a number of 18th century back swords and Highland basket-hilted swords. Um, not only Scottish, but also English, um, <clears throat> but generally speaking, we could say British uh, basket-hilted swords of the 18th century. But this was made in 1880, so like a hundred, more than 100 years later than those blades were really prevalent. Um, so what we've got is someone in 1880 requesting that Wilkinson make a particular model of sword that really hadn't been around or hadn't been popular for a hundred years thereabouts. Okay, so they thought this blade is awesome, I want to get that recreated by Wilkinson, Wilkinson did it. Now in terms of the hilt, this is not the original hilt, although it's a period hilt, not the original hilt that was married to this back sword blade. The blade was made in 1880 and this is the 1897 pattern hilt, okay, so this is 17 years later. And this hilt almost certainly, well, we can see it's Victoria. Queen Victoria died in 1901, so we can say without any shadow of a doubt whatsoever that this hilt dates to between 1897 and 1901, which gives us a three, four year window, okay? Um, and probably it dates to 1897, 1898, because when the new regulations came in, that's when most people changed their hilts. <coughs> so, um, previously, this had a different type of hilt on it. We actually know what type of hilt that was, more or less, 
from the description in the Wilkinson record. And it, essentially it was a bit like a, a cavalry hilt, so just grab one behind the camera here. There we go. It was a little bit like that, but probably symmetrical. So these two bars that are on one side, it probably had the same sort of arrangement on the other side as well. But Similarly, you can find more about that in the article linked below. And this was replaced in um, 1897 or thereabouts, so it's not the original hilt. But it probably, I believe, at least if it was Alexander Evans Gordon and he had the sword the whole time, then um, he, it was his sword the whole time and he just updated the hilt when the regulations changed. So anyway, I thought this would be a really interesting sword for you to show. In terms of what do I think about it as a sword, um, so as someone who uses swords, twice a week, sometimes more. Um, it's great. It is a lovely, lovely sword. Um, and I would happily choose this to have a fight with right now, tomorrow, whenever, okay? It's, it's the best of all worlds. Great for thrusting, good st um, straight blade. It's got a fair amount of rigidity to it. Um, it's got a double-edged blade here, so you can use the full sedge quite effectively. Great for penetration, which you all know I love. Um, a good strong blade, so good for guarding. Nice and rigid down here with the double fullers. It's got double fillers in case any of you can't see. So a main fuller here, secondary fuller there. Um, it's a lovely blade design, obviously great quality because it's Wilkinson. And the 1897 pattern hilt is functionally a great hilt. You've got a great amount of hand protection. You've got a really nice grip, good length, about 14 centimeters, and a fully checkered back strap, so lots of traction, lots of grip. So yeah, fantastic fighting sword. And to be honest, if I was alive in 1900, 1898, whatever, and I was going to Afghanistan or any other part of the world where I thought I might have to use a sword, Northwest frontier of India or whatever, um, then absolutely, hell yeah, this would be a good sword to take. And I would happily uh, take this on campaign with me any day of the week. Um, anyway, I hope that's been interesting. The main thing is go and have a look at that article if you're interested and uh, go and have a look at my um, website. Uh, and give the Facebook page a like if you would, that'd be much appreciated. And I'll see you soon for more videos. Cheers, folks.